Welcome to Words on the Outside with Laura Bynum. Today's reading is provided by author Susan McCorkendale, whose luminaries include Nora Ephron, Irma Bombeck, David Sedaris, Woody Allen, and Dave Barry. Susan reads from Chapter 17 of her creative nonfiction memoir, 500 Acres and No Place to Hide. A listener's note for the following reading, Hemingway refers to her husband. Chapter 17 Death by Family Time Casey, you have breath cancer, hisses Kai as his big brother burps right in the poor kid's face. We're in the car, on our way home from lunch after the little guy's final flag football game. Hemingway's driving, I'm manning the iPod, and our two surly spawn are busting each other in the back seat. Yeah, Casey taunts, well your fingernails look like you gave up toilet paper for Lent last year. Oh God, that's going to do it, I think to myself. You are so disgusting, Kylo shoots back. It's just dirt. That's poop, Pipsqueak, Case responds, grabbing Kai's right hand and shaking it so hard, I fear that if it is poop and it goes into my hair, I will definitely do jail time for my unmotherly and murderous response. So tell it to the Marines, turd boy. I am the Marine, my husband bellows, so knock it off before both of you need ventilators. Isn't family time fabulous? And this is just us in the car, not even in the restaurant, where they pelted each other with sweet and low packets, or in a major department store, where they began beating each other with shopping bags and attracted a crowd. (gasps) Nice to meet you, Mr. Neiman. Oh, hello, Mr. Marcus. And isn't it even more fabulous that we're smack dab in the middle of family time season, a.k.a. summer vacation? I barely survived the evenings and weekends with my Wonder Boys, and yet here we are enjoying, and I use the word loosely, ten, count them ten, terrifying weeks together. And, except for when Casey's at work, and Kai's doing his stint of indentured servitude for him, we really are spending them together. With the economy as it is, we cancelled our annual pilgrimage to Myrtle Please God Let My Bathing Suit Fit Beach, and began a campaign of presidential proportions to get people to visit us. After all, we're on 500 cattle-filled acres, so we have the room and the built-in entertainment options to keep guests happy. We've got cow tipping, manure tossing, and goat goosing. We offer nightly power outages, rooster races, and sometimes the very special opportunity to find a black snake in the shower. We're also just an hour from D.C., so if you like monuments with your morning moves, you're certain to agree with Frommers. Old McCorkendale's farm is the vacation destination of the recession. I'm kidding. The budget travel tipsters don't review us till next week. So for now, it's back to my boys. I understand that brothers fight. I have three brothers, a million nightmarish memories, and the post-traumatic stress disorder to prove it. I know what I'm looking at here. I'm looking at 60-plus days of board games that spiral into bodily fluid free-for-alls, backyard campouts that result in bloodletting, burns, and a course of antibiotics, Marathon matches of Halo, Star Wars, Nazi zombies, and conflict Vietnam that end in tears, recriminations, and regurgitated food fights. If we lived in a neighborhood, my sons wouldn't have to spend so much time together. There'd be other kids to hang out with, but we don't. And as of this writing, there isn't a single child in any of our tenant houses. So, while Case is at work moving cattle and Kai is helping him do whatever it is that needs doing, I spend much of the only quiet time I'll have all day a.k.a. billable hours, doing the one thing I can't bill for, reminding all my friends, including several local school principals and my pastor, that as of a certain date, we'll have a house open, a nice house, surrounded by pretty rolling pastures that are perfect for four-wheeling and paintball and taking target practice. In short, a house that's perfect for a family. And if we don't get one soon, mine's going to kill me, not to mention one another. As far as I'm concerned... The phrase summer vacation is a misnomer for parents and teachers, too. Sure, they get a well-deserved break from my sons, but they still have to be home with their own kids. And while I certainly never presume other children are as challenging as mine, I refuse to believe I'm the only mom in the free world who keeps Prozac in her purse and threatens to give it to her kids. Jeez, I'm just joking. That's what the muscle relaxants are for. As for how the nail poop slash breath cancer business turned out, we made it home safe, sound, and without anybody needing life support. That may change shortly, as I just heard something about playing Halo. I give them 20 minutes before somebody cries foul, hocks a loogie, and all hell breaks loose. If you see them running down the road, beating each other with Xbox controllers and the like, let me know. I'll stop what I'm doing and drive over. After Labor Day.